The Harrier jump jet is one of those inconceivable inventions. For a supersonic aeroplane to stop in midair, hover from the sky, is an idea that seems simply out of this world. It was in 1970 that the Hawker Sidley Harrier entered service. The Royal Air Force has never been quite the same since. Villagers of Haswinkel in West Germany celebrate Schulzenfest. It's a typically Teutonic festival, and this one has been arranged to honor the local marksman. It's also an occasion for all the surrounding villages to join in the carnival atmosphere. But this peacetime scene is in sharp contrast to the preparations at nearby RAF Gutteslo. Thank you much, Mike. Operation Handflint is about to begin. RAF Gutteslo is a Harrier station. It's the only operational RAF airfield in Germany east of the Rhine. The communist border is 80 miles away by road, or 11 minutes by Harrier. The base is an integral part of the second Allied tactical air force, the NATO formation which would carry out airstrikes over northern Europe in the event of war. And the threat lies close at hand. The nearest Warsaw Pact missiles are thought to be only 13 minutes away. To be always ready to meet this onslaught, the station is continually training and examining itself. But once a year, senior members of NATO come to see for themselves. It's a matter of pride and vital importance that the RAF comes through with flying colors. This tactical evaluation has become known in the inevitable jargon as attack eval. I'll try and fly out. The operation takes about two weeks. During the first seven days, the station is put on a war footing. Then the NATO examiners test them to breaking point. The Harrier is the most revolutionary aircraft to enter service since the jet itself. The Rolls-Royce Pegasus engines activate its incredible maneuvers in the simplest possible way. Swiveling jets alter the aircraft's direction in mid-air. These rotating nozzles are the ace in its bag of tricks. This idea opens up a whole new concept in defense because the Harrier doesn't need a conventional airfield and conventional airfields are the most vulnerable part of any air force in wartime. Although they can take off vertically, this imposes severe restrictions on the weapons and fuel that they can carry. So in practice, the aeroplane uses an extra short runway. But although the Harrier can land and take off almost anywhere, it does need considerable ground support of its own. Fuel, spares, ammunition, communications all have to be taken out into the field. It's this deployment which is tested in a Takaval. For it, the Royal Air Force has had to learn a lot of new skills.
0600Rs. Hardened aircraft shelter number five, RAF Gutesloh, West Germany. Operation Handflint gets underway. Within the next few hours, a complete airbase of two squadrons has to move and melt into the countryside. What time do you want to go down? Seven. Yeah. The aircraft-wise, we're sending the first aircraft uh, up on air test to get them rectified, ready for the field. And those, um, those will be going as soon as the little jobs are done now. Nobody, even they didn't think they'd be nice. Nobody. Here's to a pleasant... You got it, mate. Ten days. <laughs> up a bit. It won't bloody well go up. All the ground support necessary to keep two Harrier squadrons airborne has to be set up and concealed from the enemy. So there are two <laughs> one confidential personal signal for you, and there's a signal for Fox. Can you pick up the phone? I think that's the confidential. No, central registry. Central registry. Could be about stats. Yeah, it's probably stats again. It's the supreme advantage of these big birds that they can leave their nest and go into hiding. Okay, the next four part for the day. Low pressure up here and a low pressure down here, and the high sort of forming the other part of the square. We're right in the middle of this uh, pressure, this flat pressure area, with a slight easterly drift. This evening, we are going back into the similar sort of conditions, and by tomorrow morning, he estimates that we will be in fog. Would you believe? Again, a slow clearance, probably clearing by about midday. With all the equipment on its way, some clear weather for the aircraft would be a big help. Strangle myself. For the first man in, it's a delicate mission. Al Holman has been chosen, and whether the rest will follow will depend on his judgment. In wartime, these sites could be anywhere. Car parks, farmyards, even woods. There are a number of sites in the field, and the main site for four squadron is a lay-by off a main road near Detmold. From the air, it's just another tranquil forest. But underneath its canopy, an RAF airbase will soon be in operation. The boss of this site will be Tony Chaplin, officer commanding four squadron. He has over 2,000 hours experience in fast jets, including three years on the Harrier. The biggest priority is for the Royal Signals to set up effective communications with headquarters, with the aircraft, and with the mobile command posts. Some met information uh, from the um, system rather than from um, airborne checks because the colour states were starting to go down to the west of us. Tony Chaplin is anxious to get his show on the road, but the weather, always a problem in this part of Germany, is closing in. Still giving four and a half, three Ks and things like that here. Uh, it's a frustrating moment well, as he ponders the risks. The aircraft hides stand waiting, 
the camouflage billowing forlornly in the breeze. Check the uh, common area weather. It's OK. Blue. There's still a bit of mist in the valleys there. Meanwhile, Al Holman is airborne. It's his report back that will help make the decision. He's looking for a small clearing in the trees, not much bigger than the aircraft itself. Approaching at 500 miles per hour, deaccelerating to the hover provides just one of his problems. Bus 2, set gear. Bus 2, files gear down. Bus 2, clear land, the wind is calm. It's always a tense moment as the first plane in hovers over the treetops, almost feeling its way over the unfamiliar terrain. The Harrier pilot is very much on his own. No sophisticated radar landing systems, just elementary radio links. The landing pad is made up of sheets of corrugated aluminium. Light in weight, easily transportable, but enough to keep the dust out of the jet intakes. But, uh, you were venting from uh, the center point underneath. I think it's water, but we'll check. Okay. With the main road clear, Harrier number one taxis across and down a lay-by no wider than its wingtips. With Al Holman safely in and parked by the roadside, the rest can follow. OK, the way to the road? No. Is he clear? No, he's not. The first part of the mission is now over. The Harriers have flown. Unsuspecting motorists pass within inches of their nose cones, unaware that this road is doubling up as an aircraft runway. Where are the, where are the spares coming from? They should have the space here, sir. It's just that we can't get into the APs yet because Sergeant McKenzie, who is the uh, controller of the APs, is still back at base. He's coming on the rear party. What, what else you got wrong? Uh, Mike, you've got um, a starboard outrigger. Yeah. Yeah. Outrigger. Yeah. Port outrigger. No, when you're down there, you don't want to tell me. You've got to look at it now, is he? Yeah. Oh, fair enough then. Well, that won't take very long. The squadron now has a few days to sort itself out, ready for the NATO examination. They all know that they will be tested on every aspect of field operations. It's now that they have to get it right. Right, OK. A key figure in the site operation is the senior NCO, Ron Skews. It's up to him to get every detail seen to. The if we increase the load bearing area of the jack, then there's a possibility that we can hold it from going through the deck. Yeah, but the jack's too long. The jack is too long? Yeah, the line's just gone. Yeah, so we're stymied. Uh, three-eighths plate? No, too much. Will that give it to us? Too much. Not three-eighths? No, just go under it, will. 
A fire on the site is one of the biggest risks they face. So the boss triggers off the alarm just to make sure that no one's caught napping. the way down the road, it doesn't matter. Get him out here. Yeah, it was put over Storno. Yeah, I know. We used to point it out to the fire station. Yeah, but the people who discover the fire... Oh, I see. Remember, that mo all right, that's an Im initial eruption, OK? Yeah. But most fires are discovered because they're small to begin with. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he's going to end up seeing it and then calling it, and the fire station aren't going to see it. Yeah. Right? So you're going to have to have somebody there literally going, boop, it's in there. It's there. Um, yeah, slightly unreal, but again. Now, very briefly, we're on the ground, and our first day, um, what I want from you is a state as it is at the moment, and as we see it the next two or three For days, the station commander, the Group Captain days, George Ord, Operation Hanflint is a crucial hours. test. Uh, All the forces uh, under his control are out in the field, ready for action. It's up to him to, to make sure it all works. ...regard to what's happening or following on next week. Um, I've got my full complement of airplanes now, although it's left um, Steve and uh, Sid a bit short, but we should pick two of those up tomorrow. Steve, all right John, how have we got back at base about four more, is it that we want to... Yes, we've got uh, two serviceable back at base, but we've got a further... What sort of uh, percentage of new people you've got? Uh, oh, I've got a very low percentage, only about 10% across the site. Ian Stewart? Yes, sir. Just about the same. We've got five aircraft in, and the, the strip is good. The taxiway for the aircraft is now good, although it needed quite a bit of work on it. And the access is drying out quite well. That's fine. That's okay for that. We'll come back to the work. I'll be I'll be eight, three, one, four, nine, three. That's right. I'll be blocking off that road from the clock. I think we're going to have to go How more further. I think it's a bit of extra fuss. Normal lunch, obviously, but a bit of extra detail paid to... Uh, I, must, I must say, the site at Heimer Top is a real wing setting from 1914-18, isn't it? Eh? Right it's right down to the hut. <laughs> They'll never believe it when we take a pretty share of space into that. I'm uh, quite looking forward to it. Yes. Um, I saw most of the cooks today, actually. Um, Wreckers up, chaps! Good morning, chips. Thanks a lot. Well, we are too well. Hey, how about taking a plate off me, sir? Because so I can eat one. The best. Bacon and egg butter, yeah, that's the Dawn breaks on day one of the Tacaval exercise. The NATO examiners, all serving officers themselves, arrive and merge unobtrusively into the background to watch the squadron's every move. Right, fourth panel here. Can I have sunlight, please? We are on VHF to where, to, uh, The force commander in the mobile communications room is quietly confident. Everyone is on a war footing. Yeah, can we pick up on the, uh, sort of here, the priority missions which seem to be going down to five 
The message oh, reads, really? hot air balloon, They're running a three ship all the time. airborne we from Biederfeld, heading westerly, not above 500 feet AGL, bringing on to three. The role of the Harrier squadrons is to support the army in the field, either for reconnaissance or for ARC. Two kilo two zero three. Major Bill Axworthy is the Army Ground Liaison Officer on this site. The NATO examiners have phoned him in the first task. Flight Lieutenant Ian Harvey will be the one to go. The target is 15 k's northwest of South Our enemy forces uh, line is here, as you can see. Yeah. Forward line of own troops. Our troops are dispersed along the border here. Okay, so none of our forces beyond the flot? Uh, none at all. Okay, fine. Right, any further information that comes in, we'll pass to you on telebrief. Okay, thanks. It's a reconnaissance right. mission. Yeah. The idea is to give army commanders in the field what they've always wanted, a chance to see over the hill. And you're wrecking for an armoured concentration of four clicks square to the centre at November Delta, 550810. Okay. Now, the likely places are in this wood here, where we have a good track going round, and possibly that wood there, south of the road junction. Mm -hmm. Your TOT is ASAP, not later than 11.15. Yeah. Check in with ASOC on kale soup, on TAD 140, carry 141, and your in-flight goes to kale soup again on the same TAD numbers. Okay. Whilst Ian Harvey is being briefed, Harrier 869 is being refueled. These aircraft burn it up at the rate of 10 gallons a minute. And that's it. Uh, there's nothing else to say. The weather is still reported about uh, 78 case, 3 squadron, 3 squadron, 78 case, you know, so <laughs> you take your luck on that. Okay, okay. there you go. Oh, you want something to yeah. Yeah. The Harrier carries five cameras. One is in the nose, the rest are spaced out under the fuselage. Yeah. Bob back! So this is zero alpha, zero alpha, do you read over? Mm. They're just catching up your revised TOT, huh? Uh, if I get it, of course I'll have to start about 10, so I'm back to no finish now. On this site, the main road is used for takeoff. With pine trees almost brushing the wingtips and the traffic stopped, Ian Harvey gets underway. Meanwhile, the ground crew on another site have been given a really nasty assignment. It's a complete engine change in the field on one of their aircraft. If they're lucky and don't hit any snags, it may take eight hours. Perhaps the weakest part of the Harrier strategy 
is its vulnerability to ground attack. A well-placed sniper's bullet could wreak havoc. Overall security is the job of the RAF regiment, but everyone on site has to be prepared to protect the base. I wonder where the bugger's all in, Phil. I know. I bloody heard it somewhere. So, out of the blue, intruders were sent in to try to penetrate the defence. Pilots must fly and train at low level. It is essential in modern warfare. However, in peacetime whilst training, every effort is made to avoid unnecessary annoyance. So then, you know a first position, where we're coming over that yeah. area, yeah. there's two men there, they didn't have any communications. They're both 51 HQ flight, managed to get that on their name tags. Okay, you've know both nobbled them. They're sitting there now. Yes. Yeah. Nice G-Dog, get the nice G-Dog. No, we've got a hide through there and a Harrier. We came through one of your positions there first. No, there's no hide no or Harrier there. Harrier. No, Harrier. no Harrier there. there. What was that, G-Dog, was it? That was yeah. G-Dog. Yeah, and then we, 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 um, two of your sentries were facing that way. You thought we were coming in from that position. Uh -huh. So we shot on them first. Yeah. And then we decided to come through here. We brought our gun through that position. Yeah. One of our troops went through that position, so you'd yeah. fire on him. Because we were watching you before our gun group yeah. up there. Because you lads, we've got no blanks, you see, so we could see you, we could hear you walking yeah, all the way up there, but we couldn't do anything see. about it. And we believe you. Ian Harvey's photo reconnaissance is now over, and he drops safely back into the clearing. There is a complete photographic processing laboratory on site because speed is vital. The sooner the pictures can be developed, the sooner the army can... Anything paragraph delta? The crew in the interpretation center clear up the details with the pilot who's still in his aircraft. If need be, another sortie can be planned and the plane turn round in under 30 minutes. Zero, zero, eight, one, eight, three. Okay, so if I have any difficulties, I'll contact you by these means. Thanks, sir. All right. The different camera positions add up to a continuous panorama, and this bird's eye view can be matched up to give a three-dimensional picture. The whole operation only takes minutes. We got a signal through now. The enemy have crossed the border in strength, and the ship is in the path of the war has commenced. Oh, wonderful. So that's all. Now the pressure is building up. 
Number four squadron sites differ greatly in character from roadways to field clearings. Between them, pots are being asked to fly at the rate of over 50 sorties a day. Often they exceed this figure. Sometimes 100 plus missions are flown. Alpha there, boy. That's right. Comms communication 15 minutes ago, you've got TAS an hour and a half ahead. Yes, you do. And you're updated on all the aircraft which have left site two, one. This is zero alpha, zero two, alpha. Right, thank you. Uh, strike warning coming in now, uh, which came through about 15 minutes ago. Uh, two, from zero alpha. Can you raise your two alpha for me, Owen? Yes, OK, I think the problem no is... No doubt bird town, which you know is the northern end of the see, area okay. three. Meanwhile, the NATO examiners have thrown in yet another task. This time, it's a gas attack. The ground crew can protect themselves from chemical or biological warfare with special suits and masks. But incoming aircraft will have to be decontaminated. In an exercise like this, there are plenty of gratuitous incidents turning up of their own accord. Fuel leaks are especially dangerous. The fire risk is considerable, with so much of the fuel stored above ground in flexible tanks. Can you ring 701, please, and ask details on the fuel leak on Tango? Hello, Chief. Can I understand there's a fuel leak on the team? Uh, we got that from uh, the pilot inside it, yeah. Well, I said all, all the yeah, problems. Can you, I've sort the news over. Can you go over and ask him to switch the pump on? Switch the pump when I, Yeah. No, starboard pump. When I swap these over. Right. <coughs> and see if the light goes out. Right. Good telling you. All right, go on. OK. Can they, do, can they give you a wash down at all? Yeah, we don't use too much of that water because one of the sites has run short already. If you can brush it to the side and use sand, probably getting on better than using the demon water. An unfriendly Jaguar overflies the site to simulate an air attack. Everyone tries to find out what's happened. Hello, can you hear? Right, we've got a strike warn. You ready, Rick? 11 10 30. Tango 040. Here's who speaks. 2000. No, I, I will do. And get onto his G-Dot briefly. Yes, no, at the moment, there's no requirement for respirators as far as we're concerned. It was five pounds of explosives yes, that's right. under the message centre. All that the instructions were given is to check the rest of the site. Okay. The to check the site, so that's, that's all that's so about a quick the sweep round and quick sweep round and we'll take it from the check the aircraft. Hey, shoot casualties here! There were plenty of mock casualties. And for the exercise, nothing is left to the imagination. We're going to have to stop that. She's not going to be out there. To breathe, OK? His legs are all right. They're fine. There's nothing wrong with his legs at all. Just cover him up, keep him warm, so we can get the, the dock down here. Just keep them warm round here, keep it clean. Call up, uh, right. Call 4 0. 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 Call
Uh, as far as I'm aware, the fire is now out. The uh, fire engine has left us. I'm here, sadly knocked about, but this part of the arm is okay. Yes. So I figured we, the best thing to do with him is stop that yeah. wound and just get him down. Right. Did the clothing give you any indication as to what the injuries could have been? Well, could have been a burn, I think. Yep. But uh, not too sure. It looked like a burn, so I thought dry dressing yes. and me sepia a bit of water Fine. to cool it down. Okay, right. It's speed in the field. It's got to be done and away. You've got to get your care, your casualties out of the area so that you can get on with the normal routine running of the job. You can't have casualties lying around disrupting your normal job. So you've got to get rid of them, get them out of the area, and then secondary medical help and myself will be up in the uh, casualty clearance area to take over from you. <laughs> This thorough tactical evaluation of the Harrier force in the field continues for three days, all day and night. By the end of it, the NATO Supreme Allied Commander in Europe will know exactly how ready the men of RAF Gutersloh would be should an emergency arise. <laughs> 